All right, I'm going to show you the settings that you need for Overwatch 2 in 2024. These have changed for uh, what you're used to. So just follow along with me. I will give you a very in-depth explanation of why I've set everything the way that I have. But first, let me walk you through exactly what you should be setting for every single one. Horizontal and vertical sensitivity should both be maxed out at 100%. This is going to be controllable with a combination of the other settings that I'm going to show you. But if you're not playing at 100%, you're really going to put yourself at a disadvantage. There are so many techs, movements, even just as simple as being able to 180 faster that you just need 100%. I honestly wish that they would increase this. The only reason they have it is probably because of Zimmers. But aim assist strength should also be at 100%. Aim assist window size should be at exactly zero. Leave aim assist legacy mode off. Aim assist ease in should be at 1%. Aim smoothing should be at exactly 0%. Aim ease in is up to your personal preference, but you're going to set this to make sure it's controllable. You want aim ease in for my sticks. A 15% gives me the ability to make micro adjustments while also being able to change direction back and forth with relative ease. You want to be able to go back and forth without having it feel like it's jumping when you make that switch from left to right or right to left. Um, if you have it too high, that's what you'll run into. So make sure that in ease in is low enough that that switch is not too abrupt. Left stick custom dead zone should be on override. Your inner dead zone, 0 0.00, 1.0 for the outer dead zone. Same exact thing for your right stick. I'll explain why for both of these, but they should be at exactly what I have here. Override with zero inner, one outer. Aim technique should be linear ramp. This isn't really up to personal preference anymore now that we have the settings that we do and access to the dead zones. You need to be on linear ramp or else you're kind of throwing. Dual zone used to be a viable option, but now it's just been rendered obsolete and exponential has always been terrible and is unfortunately Still terrible for pretty much everyone's joysticks. All right, so that's the global setting that you want for everyone. There are a very few exceptions, which I'll show you now. Ramatra is the same exact settings as everything else, except that your aim assist window size should be at 22%. Roadhog, same exact thing, 37% window size. As you're probably guessing, this is all related to their projectile speed. Sigma is gonna be 76%, exactly. Echo should be at 40% exactly. Genji is going to be at 56%. Hanzo should be at 20%. We'll come back to Junkrat. Mei is at 19%. Far is at 56%. Sojourn is an important one. This is going to be at 7%. That's going to be perfect for both flick shots and for being able to lead your shots slightly. Torbjorn should be at 45%. Symmetra, you can set. There is a value, but I would leave it at zero. She's better as it played as a hit scan anyway. Venture is going to be 72%. Ana, you can play at 15% if you like to shoot unscoped shots as a projectile hero, but you can also switch this to 0%. Don't play around in the 0 to 15% range. Just pick one or the other, either 0 or 15%. That way, aim assist isn't indecisive on whether it's helping you with the scope shots or the unscope shots. You want to maximize this performance in either of them. Brigida should be at 37%. This is really just for her whip shot. She doesn't use anything else, aim assist for much else at all. Kiriko should be exactly 30. Life Weaver should be 37. Luzio is again going to be 72%. And Mercy is going to be 72% as well. Zenyatta, lastly, should be at 30% exactly. So why do I have you setting these settings the way that I do? Well, let me show you exactly what each of these does. So aim assist strength, of course, controls the strength of your aim assist. You want that at 100% because obviously you want the uh, support that aim assist offers you. Um, so... To explain what aim assist does and why it's good, it allows you to have inhuman reactions on it. That is the main and probably really only benefit of aim assist at a really high level of play. Eventually you get to the point where you can control your sticks and the only thing that it's offering you is inhuman reaction time. And how does it do that? 
Well, it does that because it slows down your sensitivity while you're on target, which means even if I'm, you know, I've got some movement in my stick, I'm going to stay on target longer than I normally would. That slowdown helps with flicks. I can flick to this robot, I can flick to that robot, and it statistically will land on target more so than not because of the slowdown. It also does this through rotation. In, in Overwatch, the rotation is not that strong. It, it means that if a target is moving or if you're moving, it's going to actually rotate your view to face them a little more. It's not going to rot rotate enough that you can continue tracking them. It always only rotates you enough that you don't lose them that fast. So you'll see it is always inevitable if I'm moving or my target is moving that I'll eventually get off. In some games, it's so strong that you just stay on the whole time, but that's not the case for Overwatch. So what, is, what does this mean? How do you get that instantaneous inhuman reaction time? Well, if you can maximize your aim assist while your crosshair is on the target, then you're going to make sure that when they change their strafe patterns, um, that you're going to stay locked onto them. Now, I cannot emphasize enough, for most of the players out there, they are using aim assist wrong. You are probably using aim assist wrong. You're using aim assist to help you have an easier time aiming, which makes it easier on your thumbs because you can, you know, oh, your sensitivity is slower while you're near the target, and that makes it easier to acquire your target. If you're using aim assist to help you acquire a target, you're doing it wrong. You want aim assist to help you stay on target. And you're going to do the work. You're going to put in more work to, to get on target in the first place. And then you're going to let aim assist keep you on target. It's going to give you that inhuman reaction time, which is going to allow you to become a very, very high level player. You will notice with these settings as like a soldier, you can shoot a Valking Mercy and hit insane clips that no one on console, uh, on PC is ever going to be able to keep up with. And that's kind of, in my opinion, the fun part of off lane console. That's why I play Soldier 76 and that's why it's so fun. So maybe I'll put a montage together on my channel which you can go check out but point being you want to make sure that you're letting aim assist stay on target for you. Don't let aim assist help you get on target. You're going to do that work. So um, aim assist window size should be at zero. Why is that? Well it's because if we look at how I acquire a target here, look at when aim assist kicks in. Actually, this is kind of a bad example here. Yeah, okay, I'll slow it down for you. So see how it kicked in there? Boom, you can see my sensitivity start to slow. And I'm not even on target yet. There's, Mercy has the big hitbox, but even then I wasn't quite on target. And that's there's a window about the size of my crosshair that is when aim assist kicks in. Um, it's about the space on your screen. It's not about the space next to your, um, you know, it, it's not like a cone or an invisible force field around the character where aim assist kicks in. It's actually about the space on your physical crosshair on your screen. That, that's when aim assist kicks in. So aim assist window size of zero is about the size of my crosshair, which in my opinion for hit scans is actually too high. It's too, too large of a circle, but it's the closest we can get to a sticky reticle that's going to stay on our target. So that's what I would recommend that you use is 0% for all hit scans, including hit scans that are shotgun spread like Reaper and Tracer. Because even though you don't want to, you don't have to be as accurate, you want to be as accurate as you possibly can. If you, if you can one clip uh, a Mercy using headshots from far away, that's how close you want it to be. Especially because if I'm playing Tracer, you know, you're going to notice that my, my shotgun spread is almost, it's practically the size of my reticle here, which as I said, is what 0% aim ease in, aim window size actually gives me. So for that reason, you're going to want to use a window size of 0, except for the projectile exceptions that I mentioned. So... Why aim assist ease in at 1%? Well, that's a good question. Let me just demonstrate what I'm calling the gyroscope effect. But if I want to do a circle around Mercy, and I turn aim assist ease in to zero, I can make that circle 
pretty well until unless I fall out of the aim assist window size. Just because it's it's even. The amount of aim assist that I get is evenly distributed no matter how close I am to Mercy as long as my crosshair is as long as my target is within my aim assist window. But if I turn aim assist ease in on, what that does is it makes it so that the center of my crosshair has stronger aim assist than the outer edges of my aim assist window. So if I try to circle mercy, you're going to notice it actually kind of makes a spiral to where even if I'm just making small rotational motions with my joist with my joystick, it's going to end up centering on the target because aim assist is strongest in the center of my crosshair. So everything kind of pulls you in to that center. So that's what I call the gyroscope effect. Um, so when we have aim assist window size at zero, you might be wondering, well, if we want that gyroscope effect, why don't we just have 100% aim ease in? Well, the reason is because it kind of slips off the target. As I said, aim assist ease in makes your aim assist weaker at the outer edges of your, your aim assist window, which means that overall we're sacrificing some aim assist by turning this setting on. And so you don't want to sacrifice that much. You don't want it just to, to make your aim assist overall weaker. You just want ever so slightly to have a weaker aim assist on the outer edge of your joystick, uh, 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 the outer edge of your crosshair. And, and have it strongest in the center of your crosshair so that you get that gyroscope effect that's going to eventually center your crosshair on your target. You'll notice as you test out these settings that it really does work exceptionally well. If you're, target, if you're on a tracer with these aim settings, you're going to find that like somehow it stays on target. I'll show some clips and it, it, I encourage you to play Soldier or even Sojourn or someone that's got a pretty close to zero aim assist window size because you'll notice it pretty much immediately. All right, so aim smoothing should be at 0%. Why is that and what is aim smoothing actually meant to do? Aim smoothing actually uh, smooths out your inputs and it does so because many times when you're trying to track a target perfectly, you have to you know change from going up diagonally down uh, to, to, to down to the right diagonally. And when you move your joystick across, um, the, the joystick plane, I'll call it, which is just that area of your joystick that you have to operate in. It's a circle and it's got the friction ring uh, on the outside of it. When you move your joystick on the joystick plane in order to create a new vector, you have to pass over a lot of space that is incorrect vectors for what you're trying to select. That's just kind of a really nerdy way of saying you got to make incorrect moves to get to the right direction that you want to point. And that's inherent in joysticks. It's just inevitable. So what aim smoothing does is it just puts a little delay and it says, we're just going to take the average of the inputs that we got in this window. So if I, you know, if I have aim smoothing on, everything looks smoother because it's taking an average in the window of time that I've, I've got. So it just really does smooth out your inputs. You can make diagonals pretty easily. You can make straight lines pretty easily. But what you can't feel when I'm doing this on screen, because you're not providing the input, is that there's a significant amount of input delay. Most of the pros have said 100% is just way too much. 99 or 98% is kind of that sweet spot. But still, having tested it, it adds about 100 milliseconds of delay to have aim smoothing on. And that was previously 100% necessary because we didn't have access to dead zone settings. So you had to play with aim, aim smoothing on or else you were kind of enabled to make uh, uh, micro adjustments. But now that you have dead zones, you can make those micro adjustments on almost any sticks in the world and you're not gonna have issues with it. So play with aim smoothing off. I know that all of the pros are still kind of getting used to whether they should be aim smoothing off or not, but in my opinion, the 0% input lag combined with these other settings is a must because it's going to make you a more versatile player, someone who can play a tracer, who can play a soldier, who can play whoever you need to with 100% instant reaction time speed and some sometimes subhuman reaction time speeds because, um, because you've got that instantaneous reaction time from aim assist. Okay, so why do we, I have you setting uh, your left stick dead zone to override? 
it's because if you if you set it to anything other than override it's either going to not do anything or add to your dead zones that's pretty straightforward you don't want to add extra dead zones that is even worse than the huge dead zones that we have by default so you want to set these on override why do i have you setting the inner dead zone to 0.00, .00? that's because on your left stick especially, there's no reason not to have this at zero. Even if you're drifting a little bit on some people's sticks, you might find yourself drifting. That's okay. A little bit of stick drift is actually going to activate aim assist automatically just because, you know, when you have a little bit of movement, that triggers aim assist to activate. That's not going to be noticeable because no one stands still in Overwatch, but it is actually going to make you more accurate because when you're 80 80 strafing and your joystick passes across the middle of your joystick, your joystick space on the left side you're going to keep aim assist that whole time whereas otherwise sometimes you'll lose aim assist for even a split second which you know that that's super costly in the one v one so why do i have the right uh stick dead zone actually let me talk about the dead zone on outer on the left stick i set this to 1.0 because as soldier and other characters oftentimes you need to position for cover really precisely so that you're you're as you have as little exposure as possible, just like this. Whereas if you're on something like 0.5 for your outer dead zone, it makes all of your movements more accentuated. So now all of a sudden I'm trying to get lined up on this thing and I can't, I'm just like stuck trying to get that fine tune and I'm shooting the wall, it's just awful. So for almost every character, you need that at 1.0 so you can make precise movements. And you might say like, well, how do I get that instantaneous ADAD strafing that I, I can do with the outer dead zone? You just move your thumb faster. That's really all there is to it. You can always strafe just as much as you can if you have those outer dead zones, but you just have to train for it. Okay, for your right stick, outer de inner dead zone, and outer dead zone. I have you setting it as the exact same thing. The reason for this is because, again, you want to get the most real estate you can out of your sticks. And even if you have a little drift on your right stick, which you can see, I do have a little bit of drift that it sometimes triggers. I don't know if it's super apparent on these settings, but yeah, it'll drift up. And if I just stop moving, it'll actually drift me all the way up to the skybox. But that's okay because you're always gonna have your hands on the sticks and you'll notice it feels so much more responsive. It feels like you're actually connected to the controller. I really encourage you to play with zero dead zones. You don't have to have an esports level controller to handle it. I've played with on stock Xbox controllers on anything. Um, and especially on PlayStation controllers, that's going to feel even better because they have a higher pulling rate uh, by default than Xbox controllers do. So definitely encourage you to do that. The linear ramp for aim technique is kind of a hot topic. Previously, people use dual zone. No one uses exponential log. I'll explain why in a second, but uh, dual zone is kind of nice because you got those two zones. And right here, it feels like you're an ash about to snipe somebody from far away. But if you need a flick, you can by reaching the outer edge. The problem is, um, here's a really common scenario. Uh, you've got a tracer and you're 80, 80 strafing. So I'm gonna change the bot. So she's going left, right, you're going left, right. And what you need is to be able to track her going left and then right and left and right. Now tell me how you're gonna do that even at 100 and 100 sensitivity. You're not, you're going to have to do constant flicks. And the only reason people think that this is doable on dual zone is because they've had aim smoothing on at the hundred default. And yeah, it's kind of doable a little bit, but I have almost no control over it. I, I have to just time it. I can't say whether to track at one speed or not. It's just aim smoothing kind of doing all the work for me. And that's not precise control that's needed for this kind of, um, this kind of aiming. So I turn aim smoothing off and I change to linear ramp instead. Now, why isn't exponential ramp good for this? Well, it's because exponential ramp doesn't have the two zones, but it has the same problem, which is that the, the inner portion of the joystick is just too insensitive. It's not responsive enough. So you gotta like flick your joystick all the way over. And it's just, it's unbearable to try to get from one, one speed to another. Linear ramp is so much more responsive. It's, it's so much, it feels so much better. So it, it, at first, it's going to feel too responsive. And especially if you don't have a joystick extender, it might be a little too responsive. But you will get used to it. It will make you a better player. This is, you know, imagine a tracer here. And I can track. This is with no aim assist. I can track going back and forth at different speeds. 
that is the power of linear ramp. I hope that didn't make you dizzy. So that's why I recommend everything that I do. Now, let me explain why I have you setting the projectile sizes the way that uh, the, the aim assist window size, the way that I did for every single character. That is because the amount that you have to lead your shots as any particular hero is a very specific mathematical calculation. I won't bore you with the formula, but it's just simple trigonometry. And it means that if I'm playing Arissa, for example, which I'm actually not sure that I showed Arissa's, it should be 25%. So if I'm playing Arissa, I always have to lead a moving target. If they're moving at the 5.5 or 6 meters per second that typical players move at, I always have to lead them by the exact same degree, the exact same angle on my screen. So I'm just going to put my crosshair ahead of this robot. And when you move back the other way, you can see how, like, basically, if I put the outer edge of my crosshair on this robot, he's going to walk right into these projectiles. And that's a different example. It's not the right size because he's moving at a slower speed than normal characters. But you'll notice that in Overwatch, characters always move at the same speed because, you know, everybody everybody's holding the joystick all the way out. So it's really easy to lead your shots if you understand that it's going to be the same angle at any distance. So you can see how if he's walking to the left, this other guy's getting in the way, and my aim assist is way up, getting, getting caught on everyone. But... Even if he's super far away, it's the same amount of projectile lead because as he gets further away, my projectiles get further away too, so they have further to travel. So it's really, really important to understand that the angle that you need to lead an, an opponent is always the same in Overwatch because they're always moving at the same speed. So that's why I have a specific calculation for every single aim assist window size because you're not always going to lead them um, when, when you're shooting at them. Sometimes you're spamming down a doorway. Sometimes you're going to shoot down a choke. But when you do lead them, you know that you need to lead your target by a certain amount and no more. If your window size is too big, then you're going to be leading targets by a mathematically impossible amount. Like you're, you're, you're going to lead them so far ahead that they couldn't run into those bullets even if they tried to. And you can have aim assist totally eliminate that possibility for you just by setting the window size to what I have for you. And one other thing that I'll say on the aim assist ease in is if you're a projectile hero, you can play around with this. If you're a hit scan, I highly recommend leaving it at 1%. But if you're a projectile hero, especially those of you with a really, really large um, window size like Venture or Mercy, you can bring this up, try 30% or 40% or even try 0% if you really want. Um, but that's just to get the hang of, you know, what you like in terms of the feel of aiming, because you definitely don't want to be um, to be using an aim assist window size that's too big. But you can also customize that if you're a projectile hero, because it depends on how often you find yourself leading shots versus it's pretty common when you're in an engagement as a projectile hero. You're not even going to lead it. You're just going to shoot where they are because they're 1 HP and you know that they're going to 80 80 strafe, so you expect them to go back to where they are. So that's okay as well. Um, those are all of the settings. Hopefully that makes sense. Drop it in the comments if anything didn't make sense, and I'll clarify. But these settings are really going to change your game. And I will add one more bonus that if you're on a character like Cass or, um, or even Baptiste, there is a hero specific setting called recoil recovery aim compensation, you need to leave that on. It is bugged and has been for forever. In theory, turning it off would help with muscle memory, but that doesn't work because there's a bug where if you, um, you know, if, if you if you flick after you actually, after the recoil would be going down, it goes back down still. So you'll like flick and then it'll go bring your crosshair down again, which totally messes up your flicks. You, you, there's just no way around it. So um, that's a bug. I highly recommend leaving it on because it's pretty intuitive. And when they fix the bug, I'll let y'all know. That's all for the video.